So you have probably seen several videos now on the new generative fill from Adobe and the remove tool. And you've seen it do some incredible things. Like it is unbelievable. If you didn't see my last video when it first came out, the reactions were just mind blowing. But how often do you actually use it and for what purposes? So I've been using it for a few weeks now on actual client work where I handle some issue or some problem or remove something. And I have found several amazing uses that have saved the photos. Well, say relative term to save the photos. Like I could have fixed it, but it was way easier with these tools. So I'm going to show you my usage and what I've done for them. Plus a couple of features that you may not know. So let's get started. Will Simpson here and welcome back to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the like button because they do really, really help me in the video. Uh, but let's get into Lightroom and well, you'll see. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom. Now, one quick tip. If you right click on your image and you go to edit in and you go to edit in Adobe Photoshop, if you do not have any Photoshop open, it'll automatically open in the standard Adobe Photoshop. But if you have the beta version open, the beta version of Photoshop open, it will ask you, for example, like a edit, it will locate, say, oh, you have Adobe Photoshop beta running. Do you want to open it in beta? And you click open in Adobe Photoshop beta. This is kind of a quick workaround because then you can save your image when you're done working in the beta version and go back into Photoshop uh, back into Lightroom, just like you did with Photoshop. So it makes it a little bit easier rather than exporting the photo, opening it in beta, re-exporting it, but it just saves a lot of time. Okay, so for this example, we're gonna go over two different things. That trash can in the background, I really don't like. Now that's that's not a big deal. Honestly, I could remove that with just the, the spot removing brush, the clone stamp, I could remove it a lot of ways. But for this video here, we're gonna check out the generative fill and the remove tool. So you go, if you go up into your spot healing area right here, right click on it, go to remove tool. So the remove tool is in Photoshop, the actual full version of Photoshop where the generative fill is not. So that's why we're using the beta just so I have access to both tools. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is make a copy of the background layer. So command or control J. This is just so I have a backup to work with. Press Z on the keyboard and we're gonna zoom into this trash can and I'm going to be using the real time speeds of how long it takes. So press J on the keyboard to get the remove tool again, make the brush a little bit smaller and we're just gonna paint right over this and you're gonna see the real time, um, how long it takes. Now, a couple of points. The remove tool does not require internet or an internet connection to work, but the generative fill does because it's pulling data from other areas. Now, I don't know why it made that black spot there. So let's undo that. And it might just be because it's the beta version. So we're just gonna try this again and see what happens. We might need to go into the actual Photoshop if this isn't gonna work because it worked before and I don't know why it's not working now. But uh, anyways, so that is two pluses or minuses. Now, generative fill will be in the full version of Photoshop eventually. Okay, that's just not gonna work. What is happening here? Um, this is not good. I don't know why. I wonder. All right, um, let's try the generative fill here. Let's just go ahead and create the lasso tool and we're just going to select the trash can and we're not going to actually put any prompts we're just going to simply leave it blank and press generate and see what happens but this is going to just pull data from the internet from their slew of ai pictures and stuff and create us an image and we'll see how it works so and there we have it it is now wait for it wait for it done Okay, good. So there we have it. And that looks absolutely uh, amazing. Like, okay, before, after. That that looks perfect. Honestly, I wouldn't change a thing. I would leave it as is. And there we go. That was the easiest way to remove that, uh, that trash can. Now again, that was a relatively simple problem to have, but let's, let's do, let's get something a little bit creative here. Let's, I'm sure you've seen this. Let's actually try just changing his shirt color. So we're just going to quickly select around his shirt. 
I've never tried this, so this will be funny to see. I'm gonna do a rough little sketch here, and then we're going to go to Generative Fill and type um, red shirt. Now let's see, let's see what happens. Now another thing with Generative Fill, which you've probably seen, is the fact that it uses a 10, uh, 1024 by 1024 layout. So if you do bigger than that, what it's going to do is stretch that 1000 by 24 by 1024, and it's going to cause like a reservoir. <laughs> I don't think that's a red shirt. Okay, the, we'll get back to the resolution thing in a second. Oh my God. Woo, okay, that's funny. All right, let's go to the next option. <laughs> so much worse. Okay, let's go to the next one. Woo. Okay. I'm not sure how to respond to that one. All right, we're gonna regenerate and try again. <laughs> no good all right um so handling for that is to replace things in the generative fill by 1024 by 1024 and then just do them in sections for that and i'll show you a quick shortcut on how to do that later in this video it's really really easy because how do you know what's a 10 by 24 section i'll show you how to fix that all right this isn't working but look so here's the deal it's it looks really good it makes him look um a little bit thinner um but as far as the replacement goes, it's it was pretty good. So you can play around with that and see this one looks like he's like strapped, <laughs> rolling around with, you know, <laughs> gun holster. <laughs> it's hilarious. Okay, we're gonna just delete this altogether. Oh, that's funny. Okay, good. All right, moving on. So that's the picture one to remove items and you can use a difference between the remove tool and the uh, generative fill. You can kind of use a mix of them, see which one works better. But let's go on to the next photo and we're gonna go on to this one, which is a wedding that I shot on the beach uh, a couple of years ago. And let's say you shoot a group of people and you're like, oh, you know, George and Emma, they broke up and uh, you know, we don't want George in the photo anymore. Well, we're gonna call this guy here on the right, George, and we wanna remove him from the image. So first thing, sorry, George, First thing, command J to create a copy of the background. Then we're going to use the remove tool first. So select this, remove tool, and we're just going to, you can use the brackets to make the brush bigger or smaller. And we're just going to paint over this area, paint over George. I don't know if this guy's name was actually George, but you know what, for today he's gonna to be George. So we're gonna paint over this using the remove tool and see how it works. Now, a cool different thing, a cool thing that you can do instead of you notice that I did that one selection in one go, is you can go up here in the top here. You see how it says remove after each stroke. So that means you do a stroke, you let go, it'll remove that item. But if you do it without, if you unselect that, so we're gonna unselect this, and then we do one, two, three, four, five, you know, we can continually make selections and unclick, unclick, unclick. When done, then you press the check mark and then it replaces and removes all that stuff. So that's kind of a cool little feature that you can do with the remove tool. Obviously, it was just showing you while we were doing this, so let's get back into how it removed, which obviously it did a terrible job removing him. If you look here, George is in pieces. You know, he looks like he melted. All right, we're gonna cancel this because I don't care. All right, now we're gonna deselect that. Um, and let's see, let's do this. Let's go back here and bring back George. Okay, good. Now we're going to use the generative fill. So L for the lasso tool. We're going to quickly just select George here and do, 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 do. Good. Generative fill. And we're actually going to just try it without any prompts. If you get an error message, sometimes you'll get an error message. Just describe what you want to do. So if I were to get an error message here, and it says can't do it, then I would just type in remove person. Keep it simple, don't put any additional prompt action in there because it will use whatever you say to create that selection, that, that removal. Okay, good, and here we go. George is gone. Now, look at that. That is absolutely incredible. Before, after, I mean, it, 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 it could use some touch up in the back there. You see how it's kind of, kind of looks weird. It looks like a mountain range almost, or 
I don't know, maybe a tree that's really messed up. But as far as that goes, that's a really, really well done. I couldn't do that manually myself, but now it's gone. George is officially out of the picture. Sorry, George, but Emma was not happy with your relationship and broke up with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So let's try something else. Let's try a little bit different, uh, maybe something a little bit harder. So we're gonna go over here and um, we're gonna try and maybe move this, remove this little girl here. This will be interesting. I don't think this is gonna work as well as we hope, but you know what? I have been shocked, absolutely shocked sometimes where I thought this isn't gonna work and it worked phenomenal. So we're just gonna type in the prompt, remove person, press enter see what happens but honestly this 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 generative fill thing has really really blown my mind on some of the things that we can do on this I don't expect this to do very well if it does I will be shocked but here we go and we are okay good yeah so that just added like a random person that sometimes that'll happen so if we switch that yeah that oh whoa Wow so the third choice actually did amazing. Look at that, that's incredible. Now obviously I would come in here and you know fix this area here. You know, you could fix this area, fix up this area so it just kind of looks, but honestly, wow, that looks, you even got a shadow there, that looks amazing. I'm impressed, I'm impressed. Okay, good. So, doable to remove people. All right, let's go ahead and switch this. We're just gonna delete all these because honestly I'm not really making these changes, I'm just, Curious as to if it'll work. We're gonna go to the next one. Now this one here is a headshot that I did and I blurred him out just for privacy's sake, but um, this, we were messing around with things and we needed something for him to lean on. Now this looks really, really bad, to be honest, it, it does. I didn't have something that looked good at the time, figured I would just fix it in post. But what I didn't realize is how amazing this would work. So I just simply took a selection and I just selected this right here and I did generative fill and I said, replace with couch arm, okay? Now, every time you do this, the, the, the updates are gonna be this different. So don't expect to get the same results each time. Like if you do it once and you like the results, save it, because if you go back and do it again, you probably won't get that same result. So that's another tip here. Um, but this one, it, it blew my mind how good it worked. So check this out. And remember, it gives you three options and you can always redo them. If you don't like the three options, redo three. But okay, so that's one. I don't really like that one. That's great. That looks, that looks definitely passable. And that one looks totally workable too. So these are three incredible options. Now the one that I settled with was this here, which looks so clean and natural. I absolutely loved it. Sent it to him and he was over the moon with this edit because it worked so freaking well. This is this is another thing like if you don't if you're not sure what to do or how to fix something, try it because the worst that happens is it doesn't work, you try something different. But it's worked 9 out of 10 times at this point. Okay, next photo here. So this photo we want to expand. We want to make bigger. Now, here is how you could do it. So first we'll make a copy. We're going to press crop and we're going to expand this crop. Let's go ahead and make this original ratio. I'm gonna expand this crop, put them in the center, right? Just like that and press enter. Now we have our blank canvas. Good, press the marquee tool, M on the keyboard for this one. And we're going to select with selecting a little bit of the original image. I'm gonna select that section, press shift, get a plus sign. Select this section, press shift, get a plus sign and select this section. And all we're gonna do is click generative fill and press generate. That is all, we are not gonna do anything else. No prompts, no nothing. And drum roll please. If you saw my last video, this is a way better drum video, drum roll. And there we have it. That looks absolutely phenomenal. God, that looks so good. I mean, that was just really, really good. Now you'll notice that you see how it's a little bit blurry. So what this is doing is this is taking a section, and actually it works here, so I'm not too worried about it, but it's taking a section, a 10 by 24 by 10 by 24 section, and it's stretching it. Now, how do you know what's a 10 by 24? Well, for one, if you go to image, go to image size, you'll see that this image is <laughs> it's massive. It wasn't that big before, but because we added so much, now it's huge. Um, so what's a 10 by 24 size? 
Well, let's do this. Let's undo all of this, right? Let's get to the original image. And then we're going to go over to the marquee tool. Then we're going to go over to style and we're going to click fixed size. Okay. You'll notice 10 by 24, you just enter it in there. So you can enter whatever you want, 2000 by 2000, whatever. So here we're going to enter 10 by 24 by 10 by 24. And we're going to press enter. Then we're just going to click on the image anywhere. It will give us a 10 by 24 block, right? So what we can do is we can now move this and we can say, okay, well, let's do this. Let's get rid of the selection. Let's press crop. Let's expand this image a little bit. There we go. Go to the marquee tool, press, make sure 10 by 24, 10 by 24 is fixed size. We're going to click here. We're going to slide this over right there. Now this is going to be really tedious if you're going to do it this way, but it might be beneficial to do it on certain images where there's lots of texture here. You probably wouldn't need to do this, but if there's lots of texture and stuff, you probably want to do this just to make sure the resolution looks good because the generative fill, the resolution max is 10 by 24 by 10 by 24. If you do bigger, it stretches it. So it looks blurry, hazy, looks bad. The remove tool does not have a resolution um, limit. So that is one of the pluses there, but sometimes doesn't work as well, but let's do this and generate. So this is going to generate this section and it's going to be the proper resolution. So that is one way to do it. You don't necessarily have to. And honestly, when, a, when the beta does, or when generative fill does leave the beta and go to actual Photoshop, they'll probably update that. So it will match with the image, but as of right now, it's not. So let's zoom in here and you'll notice that looks really freaking good. So it just depends on the image and that's the kind of the workaround. If you see your resolution getting kind of weird, try that. But that pretty much wraps up how to use jitter to fill. I have started using this whenever I have a, whenever I'm not sure what to do. If you're like, Ooh, I need to do blah, try jitter to fill. You will be amazed. Even if it's the most outlandish or craziest thing, give it a shot. Because honestly, the worst that happens is it just doesn't work and whatever. Then you just try something else. But I have been extremely impressed with this tool and I highly recommend you using it. Uh, but that is it for this video. So hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, if you haven't checked out the descriptions of the video, I have lots of goodies and stuff in there. So go check that out. But right now, YouTube recommends you go watch this video. I personally recommend you go watch this video. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, you can easily just click this instead of the subscribe button below. However, that's it. So. I'll see you guys in the next one.